This strange but effective email tactic ensures that any neglected emails are always confronted every single time you open up your inbox. And the tactic is always process your emails from the bottom to the top. Email has always been designed for you to click on the most recent message at the very top, but that's not the most effective way to manage your inbox. Instead, process from the bottom to the top. Let me demonstrate, but first we need to change a few settings. And I'm gonna show this both in Outlook and in Gmail. And that's because those are my two primary inboxes. And I think for the majority of people, they're using one or the other or both. So we'll start with Outlook. What we wanna do is we wanna go into the settings icon here. We wanna go into Mail layout and scroll down under this setting what do you want to happen when you move or delete the item you're viewing you want to open the previous item and then under where do you want to, the reading pane to appear you want to actually hide the reading pane the reason for this is we're not going to be bouncing back between our inbox and messages we're going to take a very systematic approach to email we're going to go bottom up and look at every single email for gmail we want to go into settings see all settings we want to go into the advanced tab we want to enable auto advance and then we want to save now anytime we open up an email our going to process it, let's say we archive this email, it'll take us to the next message, the next oldest message versus it taking us back into the inbox. And this way of processing emails going bottom to the top every single time you open up your inbox will ensure any specific items that you didn't take action on, you will be confronted with and you will most likely take an action on. So for example, in my inbox here, I have an email from my landlord about updating my renter's insurance. If I just go to this annoying Google security alert, I'm not going to go through something that's really important, which is updating my insurance. If I go from the bottom to the top, it makes sure that I see that email, it opens up automatically, and I'm most likely to take action on it versus it being buried under new emails. So that's the first tactic is making sure you process from the bottom to the top. The second tactic builds on this first one, which is just learning a few keyboard shortcuts. And this is going to make you processing your, your inbox so much easier. So again, we need to go into our settings here for Outlook and just change a few things. And we'll go into general, we'll go into accessibility, and we'll wanna make sure that we turn on Gmail keyboard shortcuts. The reason for this is that we wanna have one set of universal keyboard shortcuts for both email clients for Gmail and for Outlook, and this is the best way to do that. And then for Gmail, we wanna go into settings, see all settings. We wanna to go to general here, we wanna go all the way down, and we want to turn on keyboard shortcuts, turn on keyboard shortcuts. And again, we will we'll save changes. And now we have keyboard shortcuts enabled both for Outlook and for Gmail. And I'm going to put up on the screen the specific keyboard shortcuts that I think are really important to make muscle memory, especially when you're processing emails. And there's just a few of these to understand and learn. But once you get a hang of them, it'll make processing your inbox and going from the bottom to the top so much easier. So let me put the first two tactics together and demonstrate what it looks like to process your emails from the bottom to the top. So I'll start out going from the bottom here. And there's an email here about joining a volleyball league or a summer league in Chicago. I actually want to neglect this email. So I'm gonna to go to the next one, press K. This is an item I'm gonna to return to Amazon. So I'm going to label this and I'm gonna put this as reference for later. We'll get to this in a second. I'll archive this. Same thing with this one. This is another return. So I'll do label reference for later. So this reference for later, I really love because it's for any email that you need to call back later. So this is great for any items you need to return to Amazon. They're good for concert tickets that are happening in a few months, flight reservations, hotel reservations, all of that gets bucketed under the reference later. And then once that event happens or once I've used the email, I'll just remove this reference for later. So keep that in mind, reference for later folders are great for kind of short term things that you need to look at in the next couple of months. And then this is a refund I got, so I'm gonna archive that another refund archive that another customer service email I don't need to see this anymore I'll archive it renters insurance here so this is where I would take some action but I'll get to the third tactic which is waiting until I process my entire email so I'm gonna go to the next email here delivery here I don't need this email anymore so I'm gonna delete it information on my newsletter and how it's 
doing. So I'll just archive this. And then this is just a note of security alert. This is a delete. And now you'll see that it's kicked me back to my inbox. I process all my emails. And this gets to the third tactic, which is making sure that you process emails and you reply to emails as two separate tasks. And the reason is, and kind of what I showed you is, I don't want to get bogged down by emails I have to read or emails where I have to reply to, I wanna make sure that I process everything before I start replying. And a really good reason to do this is sometimes you don't know what the priority is. Sometimes there's an email that's really, really important that you haven't taken an action on. And if you start from the top or you get bogged down by a specific email and you spend you know, 20 minutes replying to it, you may be not prior prioritizing the most important email and which one you should tackle first. This is especially important when it comes to work emails. You wanna make sure that you've processed everything you've seen everything, especially if you've been away for a while before you start tackling long emails. And I would say anytime you're replying to a quick email that can be done during your processing or if you're accepting a calendar invite. But in general, if there's any email that's pretty long, it's gonna take you anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to reply to or you need to, you, you need to think about. Or if it's a long read like a newsletter, you wanna make sure that you wait until you've processed all your entire inbox. So for myself, I would go through, I would look at this summer league, I would think about what actions I need to take to sign up. And then for this action here, um, renter's insurance, I would go ahead and take this action so I can update my insurance. But I would do that after I've processed everything. Now you can turn emails into tasks, and this is tactic four, is where you can take something like your email that you need to take an action on, and you can use an application like Todoist or Microsoft To-Do, and you can turn it into a task. So if I have Todoist here, I can go down here, I can turn this into a task, or I can add website as a task here, and then it has that email and I can save it. And then now it's in my inbox for my to-do list app. And now I can handle it just like I would as a task. Another way to, to turn a email into a task is just simply to label it. And again, I'm using the L keyboard shortcut and I can do one called follow up. I can create a new label called follow up. And once I've created this follow up label and in Outlook, this is called ca a category, but in Gmail it's called label you can have a follow-up folder here or label, and you can have every single email that you need to reply to later on. I simply like to make it super simple. I like to keep emails that I need to take actions on in my inbox. And then once I've gone through and I've taken actions on this, and I've basically archived anything that's done, then I basically have inbox zero and I've taken all the actions and I'm doing email in a much, much better way. One quick note, you'll see that I didn't have that many newsletters in my inbox. And the reason is I actually have a separate email account for all my newsletters. So I, those don't get cluttered in my actual primary personal email inbox. If you wanna know more about this tactic, watch this video over here. Thanks for watching, take care of yourself and I'll see you guys in the next one.